Hey, console players, did you know it's possible to steal straw from contracts using the Lizard Forge pickup right here? Yeah, all you need is a trailer and the Lizard Forge pickup. But what if you want to do it while you're harvesting? If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. Well, that's going to be super easy. All you're going to need is your favorite harvester right here. Get yourself a snuffle stuck right here. You're just going to back right up to it. Then get you your favorite trailer. I've got one from the TLX Phoenix pack right here. This is the pup trailer and the module uh, dump bed right here. 820,000 liters. I've got another stuffle stuck right here. And then I've got the lizard forage pickup here on the back. Once you get the whole thing put together, the first thing you need to do is go ahead and toggle back to the very last item. That is going to be your lizard forage pickup. And you're going to want to go ahead and put out your pipe. It's going to be L1 and down on your D-pad. Now that thing is searching and it's found your trailer right there. Now what you got to do, go ahead and lower it down. L1 again and circle. That's going to lower it down to the ground. Now toggle over to your harvester. Go ahead and get that thing turned on and go ahead and start driving into your field. Now you're going to see that your straw, unless you've got your straw enabled, it, it's not actually going to go down. So you need to do that too. So L1 and go right on your D-pad. Now your straw is going to be going down on the ground. And your forage pickup, you got to make sure that it is going to actually go ahead and pick it up as well. So you got to make sure you turn that thing back on. If it does get turned off, you need to make sure you turn it back on and then start driving and it's going to be good to go. Now, this thing is going to pick up your straw. And the cool thing about this is I've got cruise control set right now. I'm going 16 miles an hour. I know it's not super fast, but... That's pretty fast guys that is a lot i think it's going to be a lot faster than if you're trying to come back and collect all this later because that's the fastest that this forage pickup is going to let you go period so you're doing two things at once right now you're harvesting and you're collecting all of the straw now if you are wanting to bail this there's another way to make bales out of this and i can show that in a future video but if you want to put it straight into a silo or something like that or just sell it straight out I mean, this is a great way. Once again, 820,000 liters of product is going to go into that trailer right there. And, and the really cool thing about this workers. Yeah. You're not going to have to have any problem with the workers either. Let me go ahead and show you that too. I'll get turned around here. You can see it's got a pretty decent width on it. So I'm going to go ahead and line up my worker right here. I'm just going to go ahead and hire them. They are going to take off. I know it's a little bit off from what I did on the side there, but the worker is doing their thing. This is not me in there. Uh, that's that's not my character at all, and they're doing it absolutely fine. You can see that I'm going to hop out. They're going to keep doing their thing, and when they get down to the end, they're going to turn around. Now, one thing to be very, very careful about is if you've got a lot of obstacles where this worker is going to want to actually turn around and back up, that's going to be your problem, all right? But as long as the worker can go beyond the edge of the field to be able to uh, make that turnaround, you're not going to have any problem at all. And they're going to be able to do this entire thing for you. They're going to harvest it all for you. They're going to pick up all of the straw. And this is on a contract field. I'll show you right here. You can go to my contracts field number 25 active. It's oats. And this is the field that I'm in right now. As you can see, once again, that worker, as long as they've got plenty of room here on the outside, they're going to be able to make this turn no problem. Then they're going to go back. Now, the reason it's putting the arm out is because it thinks that it needs to put some of the product into the trailer. So be careful on that. I've only got a small capacity on this thing right now. I think it's only like 79,000 liters. So if you're running the really big capacity on one of these things, you're not going to have a problem at all with capacity. And, you know, we've already made uh, two passes on this field and we're just barely going to get to 10% here. Right now, we should be about 10%. Yeah. So plenty of room in this thing if you've got big fields. And then what are you going to do? Just take it and unload it. And no problem at all. The Straw Harvest mod by Creative Mesh has been a great addition to Farming Simulator 22, but it still takes quite a long time to take care of an entire field, mainly because this thing right here only holds 9,000 liters. Yes, that's the max capacity on this. What if I told you there was an easier way and you're going to quadruple the amount of straw pellets you can make. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. That's right, y'all. There's a glitch in the Matrix. I mean, in the game. And it doesn't involve the Primos 5000 at all. You don't even need to have this on your farm, lease it, anything. You don't need to use it at all. Let me show you what I got over here. I've got a silo with 500,000 liters of straw in it right now. 
Now we're gonna take all this draw in this silo and we are gonna use one of these right here. Yes, a TMR mixer. This is a base game piece of equipment right here. I went ahead and moved this thing underneath the silo fill point right here. You can see that if I press down on my left joystick, it's gonna go and start filling. So if we do that, what I need to do now is come across here to straw. All right, 500,000 liters in my silo right now. Let's go ahead and fill this thing up. All right, you can see down at the bottom, I've got 22,000 liters of product here in this uh, TMR mixer right now. If I go ahead and get out and I come over here and I look at this, you can see that now my straw is 478,000 liters, which means that I do have 22,000 liters of product here in this. Now, the really interesting thing about this, this is where the glitch comes in. Is because whenever you've got the straw harvest mod installed, it doesn't see this as straw. You can see up in my help menu right now, it's actually showing it as straw pellets. All right, so if I jump up here and we take a look at this, it's already turned into straw pellets. I don't have to do anything else at all. I can go ahead and unload. You can see down there at the bottom, it says start overloading straw pellets. Go ahead and do that. It's gonna go and empty all of that out into my silo. Now, the really cool thing about this is that it's going to unload 22,000 liters of straw pellets. Well, the thing is, you may not think that's a big deal. Oh, but it is. It really, really is. Let's go ahead and take a look here really quick over here at this again. You can see 21,999. For some reason, I lost one liter, but you can see that my straw did not increase at all. So I've got the same uh, amount total capacity minus one liter, right? Um, and the reason this is important is because typically whenever you're running this right here to make your straw pellets, it's a four to one ratio. So what it does is it actually compacts it down. So you have a thousand liters of straw. You run it through here. You're only going to get 250 liters of your straw pellets. This thing over here, this glitch, it doesn't do that at all. I put 22,000 liters of straw in and I'm getting 22,000 liters of straw pellets out. Why is that important? But when you come over here and you look at your prices menu, you can see that straw is normally right now around $62 to $59. Well, if I look at my fluctuations, it's $88, which is my max price. All right, not a big deal, right? So let's go ahead and come down here and take a look at our straw pellets. We're going to do the exact same thing. I keep coming all the way down to right here. You can see that it's $369. All right, so that's a little bit over four times as much for straw pellets as it is for straw. But I just turned 22,000 liters of straw into 22,000 liters of straw pellets. Y'all, I'm gonna make four times the amount of money on the exact same amount of straw, right? So the glitch here is it quadruples your money and you don't have to use that thing right there at all. You come over here to your silo. Now it's gotta be a, a bulk load or a multi-product silo. Right, so I recommend this one right here by Omatana. It's got a lot of great ones in there. Also, Missy P has some other really good ones as well. Just make sure that it's a multi-product that you could put straw into it, and then you're gonna be able to actually just fill this thing up and then unload it straight into here, and you're good to go. That's the whole trick with this. I mean, it's a glitch. It's a major, major glitch. Now, I don't know how long this is gonna last. Today is February 13th, 2024. We may get an update for this. We may not. Let me show you something else that's really, really cool about this. I'm going to go ahead and start filling once again. Now, I'm going to let this thing get to uh, about 5,000 liters. Let's go ahead and start unloading it. So you can see that I'm filling it and unloading it at the same time. Now, my animation is not working here, but check a look at this. If I come over here to the menu, you can see that my straw volume is going down. My straw pellets volume is going up. And it's just going to keep doing it until I tell it to stop. I could do all 500,000 liters at one time if I wanted to. I don't have to stick around. I could leave. I could go do something else. Guys, there are many, many ways that you can collect straw. I mean, you can bail the stuff up, bring it over here. It's going to drop in there, right? Um, so you've got your auto load options. You've got some really big forage harvesters that now pick up straw as well. And there are a lot of different issues or a lot of different ways to be able to do this. I've got some awesome videos. Go check out my fast farming playlist, my tips and tricks playlist all kinds of different videos over there. Took a look at multiple, multiple ways that you can get your straw over here to this silo quickly. And then all you gotta do, do this right here, come back over with your high capacity trailers, fill it up, send it over, sell it, and you've just now made four times the amount of money. The Straw Harvest Pack has finally made its way to Farming Simulator 22, releasing on January 23rd. 
2024. I remember this mod from Farming Simulator 19, and it was a great, great mod then, and I think it's even better now. It's a little bit slow, guys. I'm not going to lie. Six miles an hour for this Primos 5000 right here. What if there was a way that you could actually do like three things at once? Oh, yeah. You're going to be able to Ted and Windrow all at the same time if you get the ultimate mowing and bailing pack by Mac Trucker 921. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. Easiest way to find these mods is come down to your mods and DLC portion of your store. You're going to click on the straw harvest pack. And you're going to go across all the way until you see the Krona Primos 5000 right here. Now, really, there's only two options that you have on this thing. You manually fill it or you automatically fill it. It's a $10,000 price difference for automatically filling. I think that's the way most of us are going to want to go. But if you want to play realistically, go ahead and select manual right here. The next two pieces of equipment are part of the ultimate mowing and bailing pack right here. And as you can see, you come across all the way to these two pieces right here. They're both Kubotas. You're going to want the tether right here first. And the one thing about that is that you're going to want to make sure that you actually get the proper attachment on the back. All right. So the rear hitch, you want to make sure you come across until it's a three point hitch right here. Everything else on the color, you could do whatever you'd like to, but that's the important part right here. The three point hitch on the rear. And the reason you need the three point hitch is because you're going to be using the wind rower right here. And it comes standard with a three point hitch on the front. So you've got to be able to mate those two up the back of the windrow to the, or the back of the tether to the front of the windrow here on the rear hitch. What you want to go and do now is go ahead and get a ball hitch because that's going to be what you need for the baler. All right. So we know that this thing's going to pass through PTO, so it's going to work perfectly fine. You're not going to have any issues there. So make sure ball hitch on the rear of this one, three point on the rear of the tether. Once you get everything put together, it's pretty simple. All you need to do is toggle back to the pellet maker back in the back, and then you're going to want to make sure that you go ahead and put it down. All right. So it's got a lift up in default. You want to go and lower that thing down, and then you're going to want to go ahead and just turn it on. All right. Now, the next thing you want to do is go ahead and toggle to either your tether or your wind rower. Make sure you're turning those items on as well. And then you're just going to start going. Now, what I've got here are some windrows already existing from my mower. All right. I made sure to get a uh, a windrow state on that instead of a widespread because this windrower or this tether right here that's on the back of my tractor, all right, it's it's kind of narrow and it's going to work better if it's already in a windrowed stat status, all right. So all we got to do, go ahead and just start pulling forward, and you'll see that it kind of makes it it kicks it out a little bit wider, all right. So that's why you want to make sure that. You got it already um, narrow because if you don't have it in a windrowed status, then your windrower back there in the back is going to pick up partially of your hay that you're uh, wind, uh, tedding right now. And then it's going to pick up some of the grass too. And it's going to mix in there. And then it's not going to get picked up because it's, it's awkward and you, it's just not going to be a fun time. All right. So make sure that you're picking up a windrow first, hit it with your tether, hit it with your windrow, and then you get the the pellet maker there in the back. So pretty simple. You just go make sure you've got a, uh, a tractor that's got enough horsepower. All right. I'd say somewhere 500 in that range, maybe 450. All right. And you're going to go uh, only six miles an hour is all you're going to be able to get out of this thing. That is all that the pellet maker, the Prevost 5000 there. That's all the faster it's going to let you go. So there's really no way to do a fast farming on this right now. Don't worry, I'm going to be looking at some things, but this is day number one, and I just wanted to get in here and show you guys that you could do three things at once to help save a little bit of time, because time savings is fast farming. Also, it's not always just doing things at 100 miles an hour. Yeah, you could actually have your worker go ahead and do it for you. Let me show you that right here. Whenever you get a windrow and a tether on the front of this thing, it's just going to follow it, right? Now, the next row over, it's not going to have anything, so you're just going to have to do basically one row at a time unless it goes to the right. If it goes to the right, then you're going to be probably okay, but you may run into instances where if you don't actually have anything on the ground for it to actually TED or to windrow, it's probably not going to do it. It's going to stop, and then you're going to have to move the worker. Now, as cool as this is, it's going to fill up relatively quickly, and you're going to have to figure out how to unload it. Now, don't worry. A trailer over on the side is going to be relatively easy, but that still means that you're going to have to do two different things, right? You're going to have to either operate this or have your worker on it. And then you got to come over with a trailer and keep moving that around. Don't worry, guys. I've got another video coming out showing you how you're going to be able to expand the capacity here on your Primos 5000. I'm really enjoying the straw harvest pack for Farming Simulator 22, but this thing fills up really fast and I'm constantly having to unload it. 
there's got to be a way that we can increase the capacity of this thing so that I'm not making constant trips back and forth to the farm. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. Now, don't get me wrong. The Chrono Primos 5000 right here is an amazing mod. I'm very, very excited to have this thing here in Farming Simulator 22. But like I said, this thing is only 9,000 liters and it fills up really fast. I mean, seriously, I only did not even a pass and a half here on this field. And I'm already having to unload it again. I mean, I like to fast farm, right? So why not go ahead and use something a little bit cheaty? And that's where this combo right here comes into play. As you can see, I've got the Lizard Tandem and the TLX Phoenix pump trailer and the uh, dump bed module that goes with it. 820,000 liter capacity here, folks. There's a couple things you need to keep in mind. First off, with the Lizard Tandem series here, you want to make sure you come over to the 13,000 V2. And then under your rear couplings, you want to make sure that it's just good to go, right? It doesn't matter what it is. It's going to hook up to this thing perfectly fine. That's not the important part on the coupling is just this 13,000 one right here. And then here on the TLX Phoenix series, you want to make sure you come across here to your dump bed first. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. And then here on your configuration, you just want to make sure you make that say unreal capacity everything else customize it the way you want to but the important part unreal capacity on your configuration and you're also going to need one of these pump trailer frames right here so when we take a look at this the only customization you could do is the tires and the frame color go ahead and just customize it however you want nothing super important here but you need both of these pieces of equipment from the tlx pack to be able to make this work first thing we're going to take a look at here is the lizard tandem series now one really cool thing about this is that the wheels can actually lock and unlock, all right? So if you hold your L1 and then you unfold the tool, what that's gonna do is it's gonna let these wheels kind of do like whatever they wanna do, right? You don't want that. You wanna make sure that you are folding this tool, that way the wheels lock perfectly in place. Now the next thing, go and hold your L1 again and go right and left on your right joystick, and that's gonna move the outside couplings in and out. You want these all the way out as far as they are gonna go. Once you get your pup trailer together, all you're gonna need to do is just pull it right up next to, and I mean right next to, your pellet maker right here. You're gonna want both of these really close together. That way, as you're backing up your tandem right here, it's gonna connect really easily. I'm gonna go and hop in here. Let's go ahead and start backing up. And this is the important part, why you want those wheels to be locked into place. Because if it wasn't, this thing is just gonna go crazy and it's gonna go all over the place and you're gonna have a really, really tough time. What you wanna do, just go ahead and gently back up here until you see the uh, command down at the bottom, boom, hit your X. All right, it may take you a couple times, but you should be able to get it. There you go. So it is giving me a little bit of a trick. I would get those as close together as you could. All right, so once you're lined up on your stall swath, all you need to do is go ahead and just turn the thing on. Make sure it's lowered down to the ground so it's actually pulling the product in. And then you're just going to go ahead and start driving. Now, this thing is only going to be six miles an hour. So it's not super fast, but since you've got a high capacity trailer over there, you're not gonna have to make those constant stops back and forth over to your farm. Now, another great way to save some time is to get yourself one of these. This is the Lizard Front Wind Roar. This is by Hispano Modding. And uh, yeah, this thing is 20 meters wide. And as you can see, you're bringing together a couple different of the uh, swaths together at once. And then it's feeding in here and your bail or the pallet, make pallet maker doesn't have any problem keeping up. So you can feed this thing a lot of material and it's gonna absolutely keep up. Easiest way to find this is to come here to your mods and DLCs, come down to Lizard Front Wind Rower. Then you can see it's the only option that you have. Your model, I've got the one that is actually 20 meters wide right here. It's the T200. You also have a T6 or 160. You've got a T120. So that's 12 meters, 16 meters, and then 20 meters wide brand, whatever you wanna do, work lights, color, doesn't matter. But if you've got really, really big headers, you want to make sure you get the T200 right here. Now you can do the same thing with a trailed wind rower. This is actually another separate mod, but it is going to function the exact same way. It's just going to go behind your tractor instead of in front. Same thing is going to work. RTR 100, RTT 120, or RTT 160, or the RTT 200. So you've actually got some different options. 10.3, 12, 16, or 20 on this one. Wheel setup, doesn't matter. The important part is just make sure you get the width that you need. So one thing I did notice, if you're not directly centered on where this is getting piled up, you can miss a little bit. As you can see back there behind 
the pellet maker just a little bit. So what was happening is I was actually offset just a little bit like this kind of right here. And it was just missing that far outside just a little bit. I don't know exactly why, but it was doing it. So just make sure that you're directly over top of it and then you're going to be good. And the thing's got a pretty wide pickup back there, but it can miss just a little bit. And yes, this works with workers as well. I'm going to hop out. It's going to keep doing its thing. Pulled everything together right there. Then it's going to go ahead and uh, throw it there into the pallet, pellet maker. Sorry, guys. Pellets and pallets. That's a big, big thing. But as the worker gets down here to the end, it is going to go ahead and swing around here to the next section. But word of caution here. If there's some stuff in the way, they are not going to have a good time with it. And it's not the most easy uh, combination here to kind of turn. So I would recommend probably giving yourself quite a bit of room around the outside, maybe doing that work yourself and then letting the worker kind of take over once everything is nice and good there on the inside. We all know how workers sometimes like to take their time doing these things. Trust me, guys, it is going to do it. It's just really odd because this one right here, it doesn't know what to do. So maybe just run it down. If you've got some other stuff going on in the field, run it down and then, you know, make your turnaround. But I was able to do it a while ago. I didn't have a problem. Actually, I did it on that section right over there on the other side of the telephone pole. So I know it does it. It's just, it's typical workers, right? AI. Yeah, we know what that stands for. Well, I know it's only six miles an hour, but you are picking up quite a bit more straw and you're able to carry a lot more. So guys, this is a great, great fast farming trick. I know it's not super fast, but you're getting a lot more done in a short amount of time. How's it going, everybody? Driver53 here, and today I'm going to be running a test to see if this production hack still works here in 2024. What I've got is 2 million liters worth of product for different grain types, wheat, barley, oats, and sorghum. I'm going to put each one of these trailers into here, and then we're going to go buy the facility and see if we still have this grain here in the production so then i can actually start using it right away if you enjoyed today's video make sure to hit like subscribe and turn on your notifications i got everything put into the grain mill here and as you can see about 270,000 liters of each grain type i'm gonna go ahead and go to my productions menu here you can see that i don't own any of them yet so i'm gonna go over here now and go ahead and purchase this right here yeah for ninety-six thousand dollars. that's exactly what i want to do now I'm going to go back in here and we're going to see, yeah, it's got 270,000 liters roughly in here that I'm going to be able to use. Perfect. So now I can just take all that product that I put in here and make additional money on it. So yes, this pack still works, but what if I don't want to buy it right away? Or what if I don't put all of my grain in at the same time? What if I need to come back like the next day, maybe finish putting some products in after a harvest? And then see how much is left in there. Does it actually start using it or does it kind of stay in there forever? Let's find out. And to do this test, what I did is I reset back to the original game save. I just exited out without saving, got back in here, and we're going to go ahead and load in this wheat right now. It's going to be 270,000 liters. All right, so you can see the 270,000 liters went in there once again. Now what I'm going to do is come down here to my house and I'm going to go ahead and sleep for one day. All right, so I'm back up here now, and what I'm going to do is go ahead and put in the second truckload right here, just so we can have a, a comparison between one day old and the exact same day. All right, there we go. You can see, once again, 270,000 liters in there. I'm going to go ahead and buy this grain mill once again, $96,000. Yes, absolutely. And here we go. And if I turn these two off, because those two I don't care about, yeah, you can see that the wheat is actually already being used and I didn't own it. So that means that it's going to get used up per the recipe. So you can see 150 times 120. And if I do the math on that, that's 18,000 liters, which is actually really, really close to what I'm missing right now. So yeah, it's going to use it per the recipe. So you do have a little bit of time to be able to get some of that product still out, but you don't have a lot of time. I mean... If, if I were you, the best way to use this strategy is to wait until you want to buy this thing and then bring absolutely everything up here that you can to completely fill this thing. 270,000 liters worth. Now, I know that's probably going to be a lot for like starting out and maybe just harvest four different types, kind of hang on to it for a little bit if you can. 
and then bring up here what you can, sell it off, and then immediately buy it. Like start right away. And that's going to be the best way to do this strategy right here and to take advantage of this production hack. Do you guys struggle as much as I do with these bale spikes? Try to get your different bales all around the farm where you need them, whether it be your, your sheep, your pigs, or your cows. Well, then I got the answer for you. This bad boy right here, it's an auto load bale grab. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. Yep, that's right, folks. The Pro Bale Grab Auto Load right here by Black Sheep Modding released on September 13th, 2023. And I think it kind of flew underneath the radar a little bit. What this thing's going to let you do is auto load your bales while you're handling them, moving them around the farm. So say you got some sheep that you need to feed. Well, take your hay or your grass, put it up on here and take it over there. You don't have to use the bale spikes anymore. And you don't have to use an auto load trailer either. And like you know, make it really awkward trying to get into some of those different locations. Easiest way to find this mod is to go down to your mods and DLC section in your store, go across to the pro bale grab auto load. And in here, you can see there's a lot of different configurations. The two primary things that you're going to see is the pro bale SB, which is square bales and the pro bale RB, which is round bales. Now, if you look up at the top, it doesn't really say anything about what these are except round and square. Typically it's where you're going to see your information. What you do, click on the first one right here, you can see that it's going to be for your telehandlers. You can also configure this for a front loader, a wheel loader, or even a three-point hitch like you saw it on my John Deere tractor right there at the start. Come down here, main color, they're all the base game colors. You don't get anything additional, just all your base game stuff right here. And if you come over and you take a look at your round bales, it's going to be the exact same thing. Telehandler, front loader, wheel loader, or three-point hitch. Now, some of these are three bales high on these square bales, and some of them are four. I just grabbed the first one right here and it was four bales. So that's what we're going to be doing here today. The bales I've got are 240 centimeter bales. So this thing's actually pretty easy to work with. I'm just going to be using the three point here because that's going to be like the cheapest option. You don't have to reconfigure your tractor, anything like that. You can use it on the front or on the back. I'm going to go and hook it up to the front and it's just super easy. You pull up right here. Now this one is configured for the three point. You can see my help menu up there in the top left hand corner. I do have the pro bale auto load selected right now. What I'm going to do is go ahead and hit my L1 and I want to go ahead and lower this down. It's going to help out just a little bit with what we're trying to do and start auto load now with the square. You can see that those spikes kind of wrapped around just to the front a little bit. Now, all we have to do is go ahead and just go up right here and boom, it, it grabbed it, right? Now, the one thing that I have noticed that it kind of every once in a while, you got to kind of be a little bit tricky with it and you kind of got to get like over to the side of it just a little bit. And then it should grab them. See like that right there. So kind of be careful. Watch out for that just a little bit. Sometimes it likes to throw them around a little bit, but most of the time I'm able to get this thing working pretty good. Now it's, it's not a hundred percent. The trigger is a little bit small on that. And I'll show you that here in just a second. So now once you got them on now, how do you raise them up? Well, pretty simple with this one. All you do is go ahead and lift your auto load circle again. It's going to raise it up. You can take them anywhere you want. Now guys, I can seriously hit anything I want to with this. And these things are not going to fall off. They are 100% here. It's not going anywhere at all. I just tried to hit the building and I couldn't even do that. Let me show you again. I'm going to go hit this over here pretty fast. And yeah, they, it's because they're auto load. They, they don't technically exist right now. What do you do whenever you want to get them unloaded? Well, pretty simple. You can leave them up in the air or you could go ahead and lower it down again. Then unload your bales, hit your L1 and your triangle, and it's going to take them off. Boom. Now you got a nice, perfect stack right there. Say you've got an auto load feature like what we've got here right behind us. This is an auto load bale storage facility. Start your auto load, come up, boom. Now that's the easiest way to do this. If you've got these things already stacked up, it's really, really easy. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and back up into right here. And I'm going to put them into the storage now. Pretty simple. All you do, unload bales, boom. There you go. Absolutely the easiest thing you could do to move these around. And it's going to work the exact same way. If you've got a, a straw point or something like that, auto load it, set them straight down. It's going to start filling them up, right? If you don't use all of them, then you can pick up what's left, move it out of the way. Super, super easy. Another thing I want to show you guys right here is this is configured as a wheel loader and it's going to be able to go all the way over. So if you've got a stack of them kind of like in a row behind, they're not stacked up, but like two or three deep and a couple high, that's going to be how you're going to be able to get to them pretty easy. And another thing you could do is actually show the trigger, right? So you want to close the cover on this L1 and up. That's going to be your actual trigger right there. You could even say, see that it says trigger. You don't have to have that active. You could see how small it truly is. So that's why sometimes it's a little bit tricky 
to get these bales. I'm going to go ahead and turn that back off. And then I'm going to go up here, lower it down. I'm going to start the auto load and we're going to go up and see how many of these we could actually pick up. Now, if you guys remember the beginning part of the video, this thing was not handling even one bale. Very easy, right? I mean, super, super easy now because these don't have any weight to them. Once you do auto load, they lose their weight. Now, if you unload them, yes, they're absolutely going to have their weight again. But whenever they're in the auto load status like this, they don't weigh anything. So you can use some incredibly small equipment to move your bales around the farm. And like I was saying before, you could put one of these on the front and one of these on the back of your tractors and go around and actually collect your bales. I'm going to go ahead and start my auto load here on the front. Boom. That one is pretty easy. With the round bales here, sometimes you just got to get them over here on the side just a little bit like that. And it's going to be good to go. All right, so now I've got three on the front, three on the back, and I'm going to take this over to one of my other favorite auto loads. And I'm going to show you guys that even if you don't want to play like super cheaty, you want to play a little bit realistic. This is a really cool way to be able to do it without causing a whole lot of headaches. So my auto load trailer right here, I've already got it turned on. It's engaged. The auto load feature is working. What I need to do now, go ahead and go up here to the front, and then I'm just going to go ahead and unload these bales and boom, right there. Perfect, right? We're going to do the exact same thing. Go to the back. I'm just going to switch over here, unload these bales, and there you go. Now I can take these anywhere I want to, put them in my storage, and it's just another way to play the game where you're playing a little bit more realistic, but you're not having that headache of having to manually load up all these bales. Now the last thing I want to share is what other mods are compatible with this as far as your bale sizes go. Well, anything that creates a, a base game size. All right, so Mark Thor's Quick Bale right here. It produces bales, even though they are 50,000 liters on the straw, they are the base game size. So you can see that one of these bales right here is actually 50,000 liters. And these are the same ones that I just loaded onto that trailer over there. And unfortunately, I found out that in my testing, the high capacity, the ones that go like nine times, those are not compatible with this. But Mark Thor's quick bail, it absolutely works. Well, that's going to be it for today, everybody. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a like if you would. Make sure to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications to keep up to date on my future videos. While you're waiting on those future videos, go and check out one of these two right here. Have a great day, night, evening, everybody. Until next time, this is Driver53 signing off.